rap now. And you haven't turned around. The crawl. Did it just fall right out? Uh, I pulled it out to see if it would come off, and it sure did. Check it out. The separation from the... Uh... Oh, my God. Look at that. It's done. Just shaved right off. Perfectly. A perfect circle. Yep. Wow. That is crazy. There's the 5,000 watt rear hub motor next to the 750 watt old one stock. See that baby powder around there? We got that tire fitted on the bead already. We've got the, the tube transferred over. Keep everything nice and dry in there. Check this out, everybody. We've made our cut there, as you can see, for our main power cord from the motor to get through. We don't want any slices on that cord or anything. We want to keep a clean look. We've got the controller mounted in there, as you can see. We bolted it down with four instead of two going up the middle. Planning on that nest being in the back of the basket there, as you can see. Pretty clean work so far. We still got to get something down on the bottom there. Went ahead and mounted this brake rotor in there, took it off the stock one, put, threw it in here. I went ahead and put a wheel liner on there so no spokes can puncture the inner tube. box back on the bike we've got a motor on there still got some tweaking to do dual display now we got a 52 volt system running the lights the signals 72 volt battery is going to be running this powerful 5000 watt motor here we already saw the controller mounted look what we got on the bottom there Got a little foam pad to protect the battery from those screws on the bottom. Keep it from banging around, getting noisy. Gotta add some compression into this shock at some point. It's gonna be a dual battery system, but not in the way you think. 52 volt, look at that clean cut right there. Nice clean machine looking drill. Get those wires through. We got a full throttle now. There she is with the battery back on. We're looking good. We're almost ready for a battery here. We still got to tweak some stuff. We got to put that torque arm on there. We got to put those ceramic brakes up front. We got a mirror we want to add onto here for safety. Check, check it everybody. As you can see, stock system still works. That's blinking there because it's not connected to a motor, but you can see the turn signals work. Don't have a headlight hooked up. I have those new brackets I ordered from Ride One Up. So I'm putting that on the headlight and the horn is connected to that. So we can't test that right now, as you can see. 
right, everybody. It's been a long time. Thank you for waiting. It's been a little hiatus dealing with some health stuff, but I'm back. Action and the build has never stopped. Here she is, everybody. The Rev One with the five thousand watt motor in the rear here. Look at that big boy cable. For those of you all just joining, this is the Ride One Up Rev One 72 volt conversion. We have a 72 volt, 5,000 watt motor here in the rear. As you can see, we have the torque arm attached there for power. Check those dropouts. And we've got the Sabaton. 72100 controller in here. Look at that pro installation. 72 volt, 100 amp controller. Ready to be hooked up to the 72 volt battery. Spoke to powerful lithium. On Friday, today is Tuesday. They said the battery was ready that they had just wrapped it up and they were taking it for some testing. And then they were going to ship it out and in about four days, it should be here. So we're literally waiting on a battery to plug into this thing. And then you're going to get some 72 volt Rev1 footage. This is Henry. Hey, what's happening? <laughs> This is a lot of his work you're seeing here. Yeah, it's nice and streamlined and zip tied really well. Running the cable through the back, away from the uh, suspension swing arm into the uh, cage here. As you saw the inside earlier, made a little cut. So we'll get that cable in there. Keeping that cable nice and safe. Yeah. No sharp corners. No danger to that main port there. Put a nice little piece of foam in here for the battery to lay into with Velcro so you can access this, the bolts just in case you get in there and open it up. Make it look clean, make it look good. Super clean. This thing is ready for plug and play action. Look at this here. Look how nice that drill is right there looks machined getting that cable through because we have a two battery system going on here now like i said for those of you following the channel those of you who have been following already know what's going on here we have a dual display as you can see here, let me turn the battery on There we go. It's a bit bright out of here, so I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but this system is running off the 52 volt battery that came stock with the bike. So you see that error code because there is no motor hooked up to this bike. So that error is normal. This is going to be working the horn, the headlights, which we're gonna turn on right now. Oops. There we go, it's a bit bright, so, but as you can see, 
We've got working running lights, working headlights, turn signals. Everything light and horn wise running off the 72 volt. I mean, I'm sorry, the 52 volt battery here. We've got a working brake light. Responsive to the brakes here. It's hard to see in the day, but as you can see, all systems are working here off of this 52 volt battery. I may have to charge this thing once a year for the job I'm asking it to do. The problem is I'll probably have to keep rebooting this thing every 10 minutes because since the the controller is not sensing a motor, it's going to just think that the bike is not being used and it's gonna turn off every 10 minutes. So looking for a workaround on that. And obviously we need our battery to come in before we can see what this display does. I did flip the brakes on here. So these brakes are not going to be hooked into the 72 volt system meaning that there will be nothing the the braking will not cut off the motor like the stock bike did so if i get too much power and that back wheel goes up i've switched this so that this is now my rear brake and this is my front brake so if that front wheel starts to come up i can hit this rear brake now bring it back down we also put some ceramic brake pads on here. Let's see if we can get a good angle. Got some nice, good ceramic brake pads on here for some more stopping power. I've heard of too much trouble trying to convert these to 203s. So we decided to stay with the 180 millimeter and just beef up those brake pads so this is what we've got here we've got the little egg rider for the controls for the 72 volt system the mb power this is the control for the 52 volt system we've got our brakes the way we want them switched with our rear brake on the left now. And we have a full throttle instead of a half throttle now. Coming from the motorcycle world, I am very thrilled about this. I'm happy to have a full throttle again. You have to be very careful with these conversions and these full throttles though. It definitely adds whiskey throttle endangerment. So, be careful when doing this folks but as far as i've seen there's only one other example on youtube of a 72 volt rev one conversion that's mr central driver he was the pioneer and the first one to do this i used the same nb power 5000 watt 72 motor system same kit with the sabaton 72 100 he went with a thumb throttle I went with the full throttle and we both went with the powerful lithium 72 volt battery that's built for this cage, which I would highly suggest anyone do because it's already built to fit this cage. Powerful lithium does great work and they build great batteries. This is something that's going to last. You're not going to have a lot of voltage sag. It's just a good quality battery, good quality cells. We've adjusted the rear suspension. We put some more air in there to account for this heavier back wheel and the higher speeds. We're riding a little bit stiffer now, which is good. I'm gonna wait till we actually have something in there to adjust the front to see how it's feeling. And we're not really gonna use this chain, but it's not overly tight. So we're hoping it's gonna be okay but this is not going to be a machine that's getting pedaled. 
You think Henry here? Yeah, man, it was my pleasure. Enjoyed it. Can't wait to see it ride. See how fast it goes. Got this thing looking nice and clean. The caps here, the cap these off that we're not gonna use so the moisture will get in there. We've yeah. got details. So yeah. wires all cleaned up. No bird's nest here. Got a bit of a mess down here, but it's everything's heading in the right direction to be nested over here to make room for all room for battery right here. It should be a very easy installation. So we're really happy about the progress of this right now. Henry and I've been grinding on this thing for a week and we are pleased with the results. So now we wait for a powerful lithium battery. Also for those following in the channel that know about that stripped hub motor that's detached from the rear hub. We did contact Ride One Up and there's, they sent out parts to repair that motor. So there will, that's gonna be for another video, getting into what they sent, if it's actually the right thing to fix it and where to go from there and what we're gonna do with that wheel. Maybe we'll start a new build using that wheel as the basis. We'll look for a nice chassis and we'll take it from there. But leave, it, leave a comment below if you got any ideas of what to do with that motor when it's fixed. If, if you guys wanna see another build, let me know what you'd be interested in seeing. If you know of a good bike frame to use, drop it below in a comment. But the next time you see us, it's gonna be with the powerful lithium 72 volt battery getting installed right here everybody thank you for watching thank you for waiting thank you for dealing with the hiatus we are back in action rev 172 volt content on the way thank you everybody for watching please drop a like hit that bell if you want to keep up with this build and we'll be back with more as soon as that battery comes in Yeah.